right now. Snowboarding as we know it started in the 70s. It took skiing and infused it with elements of surfing and skateboarding, creating a new sport and culture in the process. But for the most part, it was seen as something for white guys that could, in one way or another, afford to pursue the sport. That was until Russell Winfield came and etched his name in the snow. Over time, he became great enough to get sponsored, becoming the world's first black professional snowboarder. From his backwards fitteds to doing his thing in baggy jeans, the man known affectionately as Uncle Russ brought a braggadocio to the sport that only someone like him could have. With no blueprint to follow, he made his own and wrote his own story. I'm your host, Sadiq, founder of Pacific Town Club, and today we're linking up with Russ on Southern California's Big Bear Mountain. We'll talk about his life and career, how he changed the game of snowboarding, and learn how all of us can get out there and take part in a sport more and more black folks are claiming their space within, uninterrupted. Because the game needs you. The game needs us. Let's get it. So what's good, Russ? How you doing, my man? I'm great, man. I'm great. I'm great. Appreciate you doing this. I appreciate y'all having me, man. We living good back we, here. So let's take it. Let's take it to the beginning. I was born in Rye, New York, which is a bedroom community for uh, Manhattan, for the city. My mama is from Durham, North Carolina. She decided she didn't want to have me down south. Played. Ice hockey, that was my big sport, right? But I also skateboarded. Yeah. So in fifth grade, I remember going to the skateboard shop and I saw they had an old Burton, I mean, it was brand new back then, Burton snowboard. And I saw that thing and I, and I, and I just, I was like, this is it. And uh, so I conned my mom into buying me this snowboard. I remember after like my third day of figuring it out, and like learning how to turn and then hitting these jumps, I was like, oh, this is. You was hooked? Yeah, it was it, it was over. You have a club you do, right? What's your thing? Yeah, What's so the, the name of the, this is a sports club that I've been working on. It's called Pacific Town Club. And really, I was always interested in a lot of different shit. I grew up watching the X Games. I thought Sean White was the shit. I thought Tony Hawk was the shit. But like, so we all would watch the X Games and we would, pe we would play Tony Hawk Pro Skater, and we would play Dave Mira BMX and all of the games, but we never really had access to it. So, you know, we would play that shit and then go pick up a basketball or pick up a football and go outside and throw that around. We didn't really have access to really take that interest and really expand on it. I think representation is like that the, the big goal of Pacific Town Club and like any of this kind of stuff that we're a part of is like being able to see yourself in someone or something is very important. Like, yeah, so many barriers that we could think of from economic to social, but I think the biggest one is being able to look at something and see yourself in it immediately. Ready? Yes, sir. Let's go get you some What's stuff. What's good? I'm gonna find you some gear, yeah. my man. First thing we gotta do, I gotta get some drip like you, man. I gotta get some boots. Yep. I gotta get, I gotta get a board. I gotta get a helmet. So we're gonna head into the rental shack right now. Yep, they'll get you and, all set and, up. And get right, so I can get out of these Air Forces, man. How you doing? Yes, sir. Can I get that good drip? <laughs> I need the, I need the, I need, I need the good, good drip. Thank you, appreciate it, man. So you're booted up. How they feel? They feel good, man. A little snug, but a little bit of. Yeah, you, you want them to be kind of snug. Now we just need to find you a board. Yeah, do you know if you're regular goofy man? Uh, I am not goofy. No, no, I'm. I'm Which here? Turn around. I'm regular. Look that way. Well, no. He regular. I'm Reggie, I'm regular. I'm a regular guy. Yeah. Right, yeah. Try that on that. Yeah, we'll just get him all the way going here. Check me out. You ready, my man? Yes, sir. How did you bring your personal style to the mountain every time you came from, from then to now? Well, I mean, it's kind of been a constant thing, right? For me, it's like style 
is important no matter what you do. Yeah. So when I first got in, it was all like tight skier clothes and it was whack. Yeah, yeah. And I was like in the city wearing all the North Bay stuff in the city already. So I just kind of brought that to the hill, right? Like when I first came, I brought the gear. Like I was always dip, dripping with the salt. You know, we ended up starting our own clothing brands too. It was a really cool time. And I learned a lot growing up in this industry, right? It was yeah. trial by fire, right? Because nobody else could design it. So sure. I had to design it. For sure. And that's kind of how it all started for me when I was like 18 years old. And it's just kept going. We talked about when we talked, we talked about um, alphanumeric. Yeah. Which you said you had a, you had a hand in that, and that was I one did. of the the first black owned or the first black owned snow second black owned. Second first black owned. one was a dude named Kevin. Uh -huh. He had an accessories company out of Toronto called Bakota. Okay. That was the first black owned snowboard company. But the second was alphanumeric with Ali Asha Moore, who consequently was the first creative director of Fat Farm. Oh, okay, okay. So he's a kid from Brooklyn, um, and we just went that way with it. Now that I got my gear and stance right, it's time to head to the top and try to make it down in one piece. I know Rome wasn't built in a day, but the goal for this session is to get the basics down and keep building on them the next time I come out. Hopefully with the gang of y'all by my side. But today, it's me and Unk. Beautiful day at Big Bear. I mean, look at how much snow they got up here. And it's warm. There you go, there you go, there it is, there it is. Game Niji, live from Bear Mountain, Russell Winfield, out here with my man Sadiq. Yeet! All smooth, right now, we're in it. Let's see it, man. No. Definitely gonna see me again. I'm gonna come, I'm gonna come do some hits with Uncle Russ. Give me like two seasons though. Give me two seasons to work up the skill and the courage. I'm gonna be out here with my guy. First and foremost, can we talk about how beautiful the weather is up here? No, it's like, beautiful. This is it for it's me, beautiful. right? I don't know, man. Like this is these are the lifestyle sports that you know I think about. You know, I think about lifestyle, I think about like wanting to travel and get fly and try new things. Yep. Snowboarding is, I feel like, one of those sports that really can take you out of your element, not in a bad way, but like take you to see new places and engage with all of the different kind of things you like, right? Art, fashion, music, sports converge in one place. Everything. I think I have a quote that the actual act of snowboarding is only about 5% of snowboarding. Yeah. You got this. You got just chilling on here. You got hanging out with the homies. You got creating memories. You got teaching your kids. Yeah. So passing it on, it's a whole culture, right? That that uh, you know, black and brown people haven't fully tapped into, and I think that that we about to. Seeing yourself is one thing, but when you actually get out here and try it, it's like now you got the bug. I feel like the first black person I ever saw snowboard at a high level was Zeb Zeb yeah. Powell a few years ago. But then to see like one Google search now in history for me with black people in snowboard go back another 30 years. And like, that's something that I latched onto, like doing my research and like, oh, is this something I want to get into? It's like, oh shit, like this dude got dressed, he got a backwards hat on, he fucking grinding in jeans. So like, glad like you've been giving your flowers, you know, better late than never to, to the point to understand how impactful your, your, yeah. your, your journey was and your history in the sport is. 
Dang, that was fun. We appreciate y'all joining us for a hell of a day snowboarding with the true pioneer that paved the way for everyone that followed him. From the style we bring, to the stories we tell, to the way we look out for one another. I hope today y'all got to see just how much the game needs you. See y'all outside.